One of the nuances here that I think um, I want to start with is this idea that um, that somebody who's who's investing in this sort of thinking is 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 taking a more conscientious approach to application building to um, to really data presentation. Can you just yeah. talk before we get into the details of everything? Talk because you've been around a bit. Talk about yep. the value of data visualization in terms of how to present the best possible um, visual elements um, and, yeah. and what people get out of out of that next level of thinking. Yeah, it's a it's a constant struggle for organizations because they've rolled out over the years what they believe are solutions that their end users or their customers will use to drive better decision making, et cetera, and they don't they don't hit, right? It's maybe the customer isn't you know, able to build something specifically in a self-service environment or the organization isn't delivering to the users what they need. So when you think about a solution like Reveal and sort of what you saw in the demo, enabling users to really deliver their own experience, having an easy way to make it make sense for them becomes super critical because these applications now are business critical. They are going to be around for decades and they need to help users drive those better decision making. So it's all about enabling the users to do things their way, craft the visualizations their way, have the right KPIs to look at and uh, and it'll just make that adoption easier and it'll achieve the goals of the organization, which is really helping their users make better decisions faster. Well, and I think that's the that's that's when I talk about the subtlety of data visualization. It's the idea of presenting the data in a way that improves the understanding it kind of yeah. it, it it speeds decision making you know you can spot things a little more clearly as a human yes. when you're presenting data in a visual way it's it's yep uh, that would be my sense that it's just it's exactly right yeah so 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 talk to me a little bit about the customization why is the customization mm -hmm. um, an essential component of, of this sort of embedded BI? Yeah, there's there's two angles here. One of them is we are an ISV and we want to really deliver a differentiating experience to the market. We wanna sell more licenses of our product. Most solutions out there, it's a dashboard in an iframe, right? Okay, great, anyone can do that. And then when you look at it, you're like, well, that's not the type of experience that's gonna win us business. So when you can build something super differentiating that puts you way above your competition, it really makes that digital transformation very meaningful because you can win business. Uh, and then the, the other path is, I just want my users, as I kind of mentioned earlier, to see the data in a way that makes sense for them. So giving an SDK model like Reveal is, where you can customize basically every aspect of the experience right down to you know how you're going to add a data source or add a visualization it just makes it that much better for those users to understand the data like you said make those decisions faster things are in a way that help them understand complex data that they would have otherwise not been able to kind of grind through in reports or maybe even in a visualization they had earlier so as you you've been at this a while and and this is why we love talking to you because you have this this long-term perspective. Um, can you share with us a little of the changes that you've seen over the past five years or so in terms of, of where embedded BI has been headed and what what you're seeing in terms of yep. uh, you know user adoption and 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 the level yep. of applications that are being built? Yeah, well, what we're seeing is it's amazing. It's more about embedded now. So we uh, kind of got into this embedded space, maybe 2017-ish. Um, prior to that, we were a SaaS app and we just heard over and over, we need this in our app. We need this in our web app and we want to enable and empower users to be able to deliver these experiences. So what happened in the market was there was so many really rich SaaS apps out there. You know, you think about a Power BI type app and it was hosted, but it was not really great for embedding. So what organizations did that had SaaS BI apps is they just kind of said, 
yes, you can embed it, but you, you can embed this iframe experience. And that didn't work. And unfortunately, that's still what many of them do today. They're not really delivering that beautiful embedded experience that makes the application or makes the BI experience feel like it's built in. Like we designed this from the beginning. It's more of that bolt on where it's kind of clear that this wasn't thought through. It's just kind of throw some charts out there and that hurts, right? The other aspect of it is some companies are still using that SaaS app. And when you have that SaaS app, what's happening? You're in your flow, you're getting your work done. And now I have to jump to another application. I lose my train of thought. And um, that ta that switching ta tax, which everyone talks about, like this app switching task, we switch through 60 or 70 apps a day or whatever the number is. We lose uh, hundreds of hours a year in forgetting what we were just doing. So I think that's really where the, the pain is. And that's why organizations are really looking to an embedded BI solution. So users can make those decisions in context, in place, in the flow of what they are doing in their in their job. You know, they're just trying to get their job done the best way possible. So delivering those tools is really important. So um, <laughs> digital transformation is a great term. Uh, it's been around for a while. The uh, the obviously there's there's a lot of um, digital transformation being uh, talked about with regard to the current AI revolution we're entering oh, yeah. into. Um, it's my sense anyway here at Solutions Review that um, AI is creating a, a certain amount of paralysis uh, in some organizations in terms of what to do, how to yes. take advantage of it, where they should go. But the work doesn't stop. Um, I'm curious right. if you have any advice for folks who are maybe maybe just just kind of struck by too many inputs at this point it and is. frozen up a little bit. Uh, what, what would paralysis. you what would you suggest? Yeah, right. Exactly. What would you suggest <laughs> or advise uh, for folks who, you know, still have to get things done and deliver yeah. product uh, to the team, but yet, yep. you know, are being there. A lo there's a lot of glitter uh, yeah. in front of them. We deal with this. We we've had we've been talking to people for like since Chat GPT came out, and they're like, I'm not making a decision until I know that. I'm like. AI is amazing and it's great at some very set use cases right now. There's a ton of amazing exploration, prototyping going on, but you have to drive your business and you have to understand, is the partner that I'm working with, are they uh, fly by night, brand new, just trying to you know do something quick with AI or have, do they have a track record of delivery? But the interesting thing is at the very top of organizations, obviously AI is important and there's big there's big promises of this, like we need tools to like shave time off of how my operations during the day. Like if I can save a few minutes here and there with AI, that's incredible. And then you need solutions that are really going to drive that organizational value. And Embedded BI is one of those because the way that we can deploy AI with a product like Reveal can make significant changes to how you drive decision making in your organization. So I do agree with you. There is analysis paralysis. There's so much like, oh, I saw this tool and it does this. And I'm like, does it really do it that well? And then you dig into it and it's kind of cool, um, but it's probably still a year out. Uh, but we're seeing amazing AI, like just when it's working with text and audio and video and the things that AI can do there. I think on the things like app building, yeah, code coding it's good at, but generating a really beautiful user interface isn't quite there yet. And I think what we're going to see in the next 12 months is like big leaps forward in how AI works with BI tools. And uh, and we're going to be part of that. So we're pretty excited about AI and, and what it could bring. But um, yeah, keep looking, keep learning, keep understanding. And AI is exponentially improving every month. So what you thought it couldn't do probably three months ago, it'll be able to do by Christmas. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.